In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Shaggy would have said it this way. Zoinks! Scooby-Doo would have said, rut row. I would probably say, oh shoot. Isaiah said it this way. Woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Isaiah's in the most holy place ever. He's in the temple of the Lord. He knows what that means. The Lord has seen him. The Lord has seen his sin. He knows what that means. God has seen him, all of it. There's no hiding it. There's no excusing it. There's no blaming it on others to try to justify his behavior. He is exposed without excuse and surely will be destroyed because of it. Woe is me! It means there's no hope. No way out. Just to give you an idea what woe is me means, give me your cell phone. Unlocked. With all your passwords. Let me poke around inside. Let me look at your IG and your TikTok. Let me see who you've been talking to and how you've been talking about others. Let me look at your browsing history. Let me look at all those places where you so confidently hide your idolatry and your sin. Let me peruse your browsing, browsing history and look at your watched videos and all your secret skeletons that you have so politely tucked away in your portable eye vault. Your sin is exposed. Woe is me. It would certainly be embarrassing and maybe even shameful for someone to see all the pimple-popping videos that you've been watching or the porn that you're trying desperately to hide. It's another thing completely to stand in the front of a holy and a righteous God and have him see these things. All we could say, woe is me. Isaiah stood before the sovereign, before the almighty and eternal God naked, not without clothes, but without excuse. He couldn't hide his sin and he knew it. And we can't either. Woe is me. Standing in front of the holy and righteous God, Isaiah didn't do a thing. He couldn't. God did it. God did it all. The burning coal from the altar should have destroyed Isaiah on the spot, and it did not. It didn't destroy him. It cleansed him. We are forgiven because God comes to us, broken as we are to forgive us. He comes to give us Jesus. Now today, every time we stand before a holy and a righteous God, like Isaiah, without excuse, we don't have to say, woe is me. Instead, we trust in God's grace and his mercy and his promises for us. We stand before a holy and a righteous God, and instead of saying, woe is me, we trust in those promises, and we say, most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We hear what Isaiah points us to just a little bit later when he says, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God. I am the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Our woe is me is completely covered when Jesus on the cross said to Telestai, It is finished. And our condemnation died with him. Your sins forgiven by the sinless blood of the Lamb put on the cross because he loved you. Your death died that day when Jesus died in your place. Your eternal enemy, the devil, the liar, beaten and bound eternally. Every time we gather in the divine service, 
Your pastor reminds you that your woe is me is covered. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority. I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I don't know how Shaggy and Scooby-Doo would have answered that. But I can tell you how I do it. How we do it. With one word. We hear that great joy that our sins are conce- our sins are paid for by our Savior Jesus Christ. And we respond, Amen. Yes, yes Lord. Let it be so. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.